So I've begun a little home hobbyist passion project, a labour of love that I'd like to share with you. For those of you unfamiliar with Terraforming Mars, Terraforming Mars is a board game, a very good one. I bought myself a copy recently and was wondering about how I would describe it when I introduced it to my small gaming group. As any veteran board gamer will attest, it's natural that when we introduce a game of our own choosing, we want it to go down well and be a good experience for the group. Reading the rule book wasn't actually telling me what I needed to know, but after a few solo plays, something clicked and I understood. Terraforming Mars is the well-established popular game it is because it is essentially a game of who can give their self the most. In Terraforming Mars, you begin the game with a certain amount of money and a certain number of cards in your hand that you may put into play if you pay the cost for them. At the end of each round, you receive more money, with which you will be able to buy and play more cards. The purpose of playing these cards? Thematically, the purpose is to terraform Mars, to raise oxygen, water and temperature levels to the required levels so that humanity may live there. That's the thematic purpose for the things the player does in the game. In terms of the mechanisms and actual victory objectives of the game, the purpose of buying and playing cards is to gain you more wealth resources and acclaim than the other players manage to gain for themselves. So the theme says one thing, while the gameplay says something different. Terraforming Mars is the game of who can give their self the most. Literally, all you do on each and every turn of the game is work out how you can give to yourself the most you can possibly give yourself. And then do it. And this continues. Is all that you do, the whole game long, until the game ends. So it's no wonder the game is so popular. So why do I want to re-theme it? Why do I want to re-theme it when I can only do so in the form of a home hobbyist's passion project? because I don't have any personal ownership in the game and may only, at the most, produce a free print-and-play version. A print-and-play version is going to take a considerable amount of work on my part to produce. So far, I have only re-themed three of the cards in the game, which means I still have 205 more to go from the main deck alone. It's no small task. Why am I bothering? The inspiration for this project came as a result of me working out that I wanted to explain to my friends that Terraforming Mars is a game of who can give their self the most. It was working out the game's essence like this that brought me to question the theme and how it is implemented in the game and then wonder for myself, what theme would I prefer? What theme would make more sense to me? Before presenting my re-theme, I need to give you an idea of why I so wish to see the current theme replaced and improved on. In Terraforming Mars, you, the player, play an industrial corporation. Of course you do that is competing with other industrial corporations to get the most for itself from the collaborative task of terraforming Mars. In support of this theme, the huge deck of 208 cards that you buy from allows you to do such things as build secret research facilities that require armed guards, set off nuclear detonations, take on indentured workers, bribe committees, and so on and so forth. And I'm tired of this old trope. 
I'm so very tired of it. I've only played the game a few times, but I can already tell that I like it a lot. And the theme does not bother me in the least when I am playing it. Chastising my opponents for being evil corporations when they play certain cards is fun. Fun I'm happy to have. I don't need or wish for a game to be woke. I don't need a game to be politically correct. Heaven help us. It's only because I worked out for myself what I think the essence of the game is. Who can give their self the most? that I found myself asking the question, is industrial corporations in dystopian societies really the only and best thing that we can think of to give ourselves or challenge ourselves with? I personally never want to own an industrial corporation. If I did have one, I'd dismantle it and give its parts away because I know it would not improve the quality of my life quite the opposite. If we have a game, a good game, all about the players trying to give themselves the most they can, why not have the theme be about us giving ourselves what we do actually desire the most of for ourselves? And of course, then I've gone and done it. I've caused that question to be asked. What actually is it that we all really do want in the first place? Welcome. Welcome to Terraforming Self. I haven't finished making it yet. But it's going to be great, and I'd like to tell you all about it, if you're up for that. Now, in case you're not aware, my specialization is foundational knowledge existential, foundational knowledge. I don't usually make videos about board games, but the question of what it is that we all actually do desire really is a rather profound question. I guess I'm using this retheme project as a way to explore that. Let me tell you what I believe we all desire for ourselves the most, and then show you how I integrate those desires into this retheming of an already excellent game. In terraforming Mars, what is needed and desired most by us, in thematic terms, is water, oxygen, and a temperature increase. Achieving optimal levels of these three things lets us know the game has run its course because our human needs have been met. In terraforming self, as in life, what we desire and need most is love, freedom, agency. These three things, according to me, are what all living beings ultimately desire for themselves. Though what looks like love, freedom and agency to an animal may be very different to what looks like love, freedom and agency to a plant. In terraforming self, we are not transforming a barren planet in order to make it habitable for humans, but rather we are transforming human culture itself so that it may actually become habitable for human beings. I suggest that if we decide that money and material wealth are the obvious choices of what it is that humans wish for the most, then we are lying to ourselves and each other. It's not that I'm saying we are lying consciously and deliberately. I'm saying that we are lying by default, out of sheer ignorance. Money and material wealth are presented by human culture as the things that will bring us the love, freedom and agency that all living beings desire for themselves. And this is a lie. Money does not buy love, we all know that. And in order to gain money that will not buy us love, 
we must sacrifice large amounts of our freedom and agency in order to do so. Human culture. It's got to go. If us actual humans are ever to be fulfilled and enjoy life reliably and consistently, human culture has to go. All of it. Not just everybody else's culture. Yours and mine too. I feel strongly it's time for us all to put down our money-making tools and play a game or two with each other. Games that really do help us to increase the love, freedom and agency levels in the world and for ourselves. Welcome to Terraforming Self. So Terraforming Self is a game of giving ourselves love, freedom and agency in the highest quantities we can manage. And it is, perhaps controversially, a game of demolishing human culture. Because although human culture has told us we should love culture, that we should love it, human culture does not actually know what it is talking about. And while we speak in defence of it, we do not know what we are talking about. And so we make ourselves the liar. Not out of any malice, but simply out of an ignorance that was handed down. This ignorance conditions our imagination. And so we end up with board games that cannot imagine anything better than money, hard work and armed guards as worthy goals in life. Board games that may then go on to perpetuate this cultural lie for our friends, family, children, descendants. Now I say all of this in a mild tone, in a light and inconsequential video about a board game. But my speciality is foundational existential truth. This is what I do. And I'm not joking in the slightest about any of this. I basically offer this re-theme of a game as an alternative to the self-sabotage that we have all been trained into. I offer this re-theme as an opportunity to retrain ourselves into knowing, into remembering what it is that we actually do desire for ourselves, even as we write our dystopian stories and complain that nothing ever changes in this world. In Terraforming Self, you do not play an industrial corporation. You play a human being. You play yourself. The grand project on the main board that you and the other players are collaborating on is getting humanity to open its eyes, getting it to see and recognise what it does truly desire. In order for this to happen, the levels of love, freedom and agency within the human collective must be raised to sufficient levels. What you are doing on your own personal player board is managing your own personal reserves of and ability to generate prosperity for yourself so that you may make as big and worthy a contribution to the waking of humanity as you may. Yes, you still get money to spend and you are still in competition with the other players. But this is a constructive competition. We all wish for the shared project to do as well as it may. And if we compete with each other to be the one that makes the greatest contribution to the project, then everybody tries their best and the project benefits from this, which means that we all benefit from it, regardless of whether we win accolades or not. In other words, we try the best we can for all of us, not just for ourselves. None of us are looking to be the only one that is happy at the end of the game. Rather than steel, titanium and energy being converted into heat, our personal prosperity consists of time and effort, service to self, 
external support and zest for life, which gets converted into creative output. Rather than thematically blocking other players on the board by playing the restricted access card, you simply provide a home for yourself, which nobody is going to begrudge you, because we all need a home. Rather than raising temperature levels with the Lava Flows card, a love letter ignites the passion to action, which raises agency levels for the collective, not just you. Rather than having basic projects to spend your money on, we have choices and events. Now, instead of selling patents, we can release unwanted ideas. Rather than building a power plant, we have a creative surge. Rather than being hit by an asteroid, we can recognise our own self-sovereignty. Rather than building an aquifer, we just go right on ahead and commit an act of love. Why not? Instead of competing to complete milestones and achieve awards, such as becoming a mayor or a banker or a landlord, we now look to become a multi-talent, a philanthropist, a leader. Rather than covering over the mapped locations of Mars with such things as city tiles, we now heal aspects of lie culture, such as anxiety, shame and self-sacrifice, with life skills tiles, supportive world tiles and empathy events. Apart from a couple of small tweaks, terraforming self is the very same game as terraforming Mars. And yet, in a way, it couldn't be more different. You're not an industrial corporation that wishes everybody else to lose out to you. You are a human being, one that wishes to contribute to humanity, not merely do better than the rest of it. So, as you can see, I have started the work on this retheme, and I aim to complete the print and play version and make it available for free download on my website. I was going to say that the issue of retheming the 208 cards is a daunting task, and I'd like to invite your help with that. But I've literally just got back from my sit spot in the woods, and I wrote down 184 possible candidates for rethemed card titles in that one sitting. I guess I got on a bit of a roll. I guess it's maybe not that difficult after all to think of examples of what there is in life that is good and worth desiring more of. But still, these are just the results of an initial brainstorm session. Not all of them will necessarily transfer to the cards that need retheming. So I would like to see any of your own suggestions for rethemed cards in the comments if the inspiration takes you. The purpose of this retheme is to take a game that revolves around a skill that we all really do need to become much, much better at giving to ourselves things that are good to give to ourselves, while keeping the game's balance and mechanisms intact so that we may enjoy when we play it the building excitement of giving to ourselves those things that actually are worth the effort. And then, those of you that do play this rethemed game may be encouraged to reevaluate what it is that you do give to yourself on a daily basis in your own actual life and what that giving really brings you. How much of what you give to yourself does raise the levels of freedom, agency and love in your life. And how much of what you give to yourself only causes those things to draw further and further away from you, to the point where they begin to seem like unreal fantasies you can no longer expect for yourself. Yes, the game is just a game, just a playful exercise. But our lives are real, and the way we live them does matter. To our self, more than anyone else, it matters pretty much more than anything else. Thanks for watching, and until next time, be kind to yourselves, be kind to each other, and play nice.